to the channel and welcome to this experiment. We're doing an AI army against an AI army. So rather than me choosing an army and then fighting the AI rules, uh, both of the armies are going to be using the AI rules. And that's mainly because the two armies we're using, I like them both equally and I can't decide which one I wanted to play first. So we're kicking things off with the Dwarf Guilds. This is 1500 points or thereabouts, it's actually 1535 points of Dwarf Guilds based on version 2.6 of the army list. They are headed up by a Guild Lord and his upgrades include a Power Suit which gives him the Ambush ability as well as Tough plus 3 giving him Tough 6. Uh, he's also got a Storm Rifle and a Heat Hammer. The Heat Hammer has got two attacks in combat and has Rending and the Storm Rifle is just simply two shots. He is going to be accompanied by a unit of five dwarves in power suits. Again, all with the ambush ability. So because the guild lord has got the ambush ability and the power suits have got the ambush ability, they're going to be fielded as a single unit and will be ambushing in at the start of turn two. Other upgrades for the power suits, there is a heavy machine gun on this model and heavy missiles on this model. This guy is the only one who is not WYSIWYG. Uh, that's not a plasma rifle or a magma rifle, that's just a standard storm rifle. Next up, we've got two squads of dwarf warriors, both exactly the same, uh, simply upgraded. One of them has got a missile launcher in each squad. And I've already rolled, and this unit is gonna start inside the half track. Speaking of the half track, it's armed with its standard loadout of a heavy machine gun. Then we've got uh, the thing that is most conspicuous by its presence, the tank. It's a battle tank, it's armed with a twin heavy fusion rifle, which has got two shots, AP4, deadly six. And it's also got a dozer blade, which probably isn't actually gonna, uh, yeah, it's cost five points. So technically this is 15, 30 points because it's not actually gonna come into play on this battle that, battlefield that we're using because there's no rough terrain, it's just a, um, a, a cityscape. It's a bit bombed, but I haven't put any rough terrain on it, so it doesn't actually need the strider ability. So yeah, it's just there for show. So 15, 30 points of dwarves. Oh yeah, mustn't forget the dwarf walker. Dwarf walker, uh, it's got its standard heavy hammer, it's got stomp attacks, and it's been upgraded with a twin auto cannon. Four shots at AP2. Now, pretty much everything that has got feet in this army has got the slow rule. So all the power suits, they've got the slow rule, the wa warriors, and even the walker, they've all got the slow rule, which means they move four inches rather than six. However, the, uh, the half track and the tank have both got the fast ability. So they're moving an extra three inches uh, per move. Uh, in terms of AI rules, the warriors, both um, sections of warriors are classed as shooting units and all of the others are classed as hybrid units even the tank and that's because it's got impact so when it charges into combat it does six automatic hits the same with the half track that does six automatic hits when it charges into combat so if, it, if we class them as shooting units they would never charge into combat so there's no point in them having the impact ability uh, so yeah just the warriors classed as shooting, everything else classed as hybrid. Um, quite a condensed elite force of dwarves, and this is definitely quality over quantity, and now we're going to look at their opponents, and they're definitely quantity over quality. And here we have 1525 points, using version 2.4 of the Infected Colonies army list. Now, just like the dwarfs, all of these models are from Mantic Games, Mantic Entertainment. And we'll start things off with, for want of a better term, the leader. We have a monstrous tyrant. Uh, he's got monstrous claws, which are six attacks, AP2. Uh, he is a hero with tough three, but he's not going to be teamed up with any other units because I couldn't find one that particularly fit with him, really. Um, only things like the, the zombies which would simply slow him down. But I've upgraded him with a terrifying ability, which means enemies in melee with him get minus one to their morale tests. 
we've got a unit of 10 zombies and anybody who has seen my solo play Dead Zone campaign on the channel uh, will realise that I've painted more zombies because yeah I only had seven in the Dead Zone campaign but there's a full unit of 10 there and I've got another five in a box and 20 on the workbench um, so yeah lots of zombies for infected colonies in the future uh, no upgrades on them they're just standard as they come three attacks each fearless and again like the dwarves they are slow um, so a little bit different to the plague zombies you'll have seen me use in other bat reps um, these are specific zombies for the infected colonies we've got a unit of 10 infected no upgrades on them just as they come with carbines and close combat weapons we've got a, uh, a squad of weapon teams across the back there all three are equipped with mortars they are 40 inch range one attack each but blast three and they can fire indirectly tough three on each model we've got a squad of five infected hunters here they've been upgraded with toxic claws which gives them poison in melee naturally they have the fast ability as well as scout and strider and i've got to say i'm quite surprised they haven't got tough in any way because they're certainly a lot bigger than a standard human um, but yeah no tough so only one wound each but there is a unit of five and they are quick and they've got um, a quality of three up and a defense of four up so hopefully their speed will help to counter the fact that they're not particularly resilient we've got a squad of five infected dogs uh, no upgrades on them because I don't think they can be upgraded but they can they have got the fast ability um, naturally so they're pretty quick scampering forward to get onto objectives we've got two infected monsters they're going to be two individual units again they can't be upgraded but they get six attacks with their claws at AP2 as well as a stomp attack they've also got fear and their tough six quality of three up and defense two up so reasonably tough really reasonably tanky for something that's biological and then we've got five specialist infected uh, in there we've got two heavy machine guns two flamethrowers and a grenade launcher and again I've already rolled up and they're going to be the ones that are embarked inside the attack buggy the attack buggy is standard as it comes other than it's been upgraded with a transport capacity so it's got a heavy machine gun it's got fast it's got impact six tough six and upgraded with transport 11 um, but again rolling randomly to see which units going inside it it's the specialists and then finally we've got an attack walker that's been upgraded to have a heavy flamethrower and a walker chainsaw in terms of AI classification most of it is purely melee so the monstrous tyrant the zombies the hunters the dogs and the monsters they're all classed as melee units there's also some shooting units in here some, as well some dedicated shooter units so the specialist infected they're going to be a shooting unit because their ranged attacks are significantly better than their close combat attacks and also obviously the mortar teams are going to be shooting units and everything else i say everything else the infected the buggy and the walker are going to be hybrid units so yep that's 15 25 points of infected colonies going up against the dwarf guilds i'm really really looking forward to this um, I love both of these armies they're so full of character I like dwarfs anyway anybody who's ever seen um, my videos over on my other channel um, Clash of the Dice knows how much I love dwarves in the Mantic universe so yeah really looking forward to using dwarves in Grimdark Future and I really like this army as well it's just so full of character like in the zombies I've got some civilians painted up as well as some um, military personnel and uh, there's obviously some scientists that got infected in their hazmat suits um, yeah just absolutely full of character this army right so that's enough waffle for me let's get over to the game and deployment okay we're set up and everything in the setup and deployment other than the actual layout of the terrain was rolled for randomly 
So D3 plus two objectives, we've got four objectives and we rolled off to see whether it would be the dwarfs or the infected that would be placing the first objective and the dwarfs won the roll off. They placed the first objective there. You split the table into six even slices all the way down and I numbered them one through to six all the way across and the dwarfs placed the first objective there in the center. Uh, the infected then placed objective two right next to it. The dwarfs then placed objective three there and then finally objective four went there. So all of the objectives are in these two thirds of the battlefield. There's none over on this flank. Then we rolled off to see who deploys the first unit and the dwarfs won the roll off. And again, we split the table into three thirds this time. So two foot in each third. The dwarves have got their walker in the center and everything else over here. There is a unit of dwarves in the half track. The other unit of dwarves there with the tank. So pretty much they have set themselves up very badly because most of the objectives are over here and they are over here. The infected are almost the exact opposite. Most of their force is over here. Uh, with the exception being these hunters, they've got the scout ability. So being an AI army, they set up last and they make their 12 inch scout move after everything is set up. So I've done that already and they've um, moved their 12 inches towards the nearest objective, which was objective two. Um, there's only one unit in the center and that's this unit of infected. And then over here, we've got the infected tyrant, the infected monster, the attack walker, and the unit of mortars. In the attack buggy, we've got the infected specialists. So that's set up. Now, obviously the dwarves had far fewer units. I should also say that those in power suits have been set up in ambush. So they will be, they will be appearing in turn two. Um, but yeah, with far fewer units to set up, the dwarves will obviously be going first. So we'll move on to the first activation of the first turn. We'll keep the same divisions of the board that I was using for deployment. So from this angle, from the Dwarves' perspective, uh, Sector 1 and 2 will be on their right. Uh, sector 3 and 4 will obviously be in the middle. And Sector 5 and 6 will be on their left. And they've got nothing in Sector 5 slash 6. So any rolls of 5 or 6 will pop back round to uh, Sector 1 and 2. So the chances are it's going to be the half track with the infantry inside it that will activate first. Otherwise, it will be the walker. It's the walker. That's a four. The dwarf walker, being a hybrid unit, has advanced forwards towards objective three. Because it's slow, it can't reach objective three by rushing. So it's advanced, it's four inches, and it's going to shoot at the nearest enemy unit, which is the unit of infected hunters near objective two. So with its twin auto cannon. He gets four shots, hitting on threes. And that's two hits. He's at AP two. The hunters are defense four, so they're saving on sixes. And neither saves, so that's two dead. So rolling to see which unit will activate first for the infected. And that will be over on this flank and it's the unit nearest to an uncontrolled objective which is those hunters okay so this is a do what makes sense moment i think because they're a melee unit and if there is a unit in the way and that is defined as you draw a path between the unit and the objective and if there's enemy any enemy units within six inches of that path in any direction then they will try to engage that enemy unit. Now, the Dwarf Walker is definitely more than six inches away from either of those two objectives. 
Um, but I'm going to go with the line in the AI rules that says melee units will always charge an enemy unit. And they are definitely in charge range because they've got the fast keyword. So they're going to charge the dwarf walker that just shot at them. To me, that makes sense. They are mindless brutes. They are going to charge the thing that just shot at them and killed two of the comrades. Infected hunters get three attacks each. There's three of them, so that's nine attacks hitting on threes. I've given them the upgrade for poison when they attack, so sixes will explode into three hits. Ooh, there's a couple of sixes. So effectively those two ones become hits. And another two for that six. These are AP one. So this will be three up saves for the walker. is four fails. The walker is tough 12, so it's got eight wounds left. The walker's gonna fight back, gets four attacks with its hammer, hitting on threes. Everything hits. AP2, so six up saves. None, so that is the unit wiped out. So those infected hunters go down. And the walker can then consolidate three inches towards objective three. And this consolidation move takes it that little bit closer to the objective. Right, back to the dwarf's activation. I don't know why I bothered rolling that because the only things left are the units over on that right flank. And that will be the half track with the dwarfs inside it because um, yeah, it's the nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective. So the half track has rushed forwards towards objective four and made sure to stay out of charge range of the infected monster and the infected tyrant. Now because it rushed it can't shoot but that is now activated. Next activation for the infected will be back over on from this perspective the left flank again. Over here we've got two units that are equidistant to uncontrolled objectives. We've got the unit of zombies up there on the right, they're close to objective two, and we've got the attack buggy which is close to objective one. So they're equidistant because they both set up as close to the objective as they could within their deployment zone. So we're going to roll off for this. Uh, I should point out that you can just see through the window here the other infected monster, he is not as close as the buggy or the zombies. So yeah, we're going to roll off and on a 1, 2, 3 it will be the buggy, on a 4, 5, 6 it will be the zombies. Uh, so that's 4, 5, 6, it's the zombies. Now they are a melee unit so they're just simply going to rush towards objective 2. And when I say rush, they are zombies, they've got the slow keyword so they're going to shamble mindlessly muttering brains in a droning voice towards objective two. Back over to the dwarfs, their next activation, again, there's no point in rolling for it. It will be probably the unit of infantry inside the half track because it's an AI army, so they will get out in the first turn. So the unit of infantry in the half track is the closest unit to an uncontrolled objective. We don't control it until the end of the turn. So they're gonna disembark from the half track Right, the dwarf warriors down here have disembarked from the half track and they've done it in such a way that they are within six inches of the half track because they need they can't move more than six inches when they disembark they are within three inches of that objective and they've also left a clean field of fire for the half track for the next turn they're going to shoot at the nearest enemy unit which is the infected weapons teams with the mortars we've got four assault rifles with one shot each. They've got 24 inch range, so those weapon teams are definitely in range. We'll shoot with them first. We're gonna hit on fours. And that's only one hit. No AP. The weapon team's got five up save. And that's a four. So it takes a wound. Each of those weapons team's bases has got tough three. So one of them's down to one wound left. And we've also got a 
missile launcher. I suppose I should really have fired that first because if we use the anti-tank version that's AP3 Deadly 3 so that could kill one base. So we'll fire the anti-tank shot from the missile launcher and that's a miss anyway so it doesn't really matter. So the next unit to activate for the infected will be the unit of infected in the centre. The infected are a hybrid unit and the Dwarf Walker is now within six inches of Objective 3, which means it's classed as being in the way, even though it's not physically in the way. So that means being in a, uh, a hybrid unit, the infected have advanced their six inches and will shoot at the Dwarf Walker. They've got carbines, which are one shot each, 18 inch range. There's 10 of them, so they get 10 shots and they're quality five. So not the best shots, but comparable to a Human Defence Force Trooper, which is effectively what they are. They are Human Defence Force Troopers who have been infected with this virus, with this plague. So let's see what we get. That's two hits. No AP. Walker's got two up save. And saves them both. Over to the Dwarves. This unit of Dwarves is activated next, Dwarf Warriors. and. I realise these guys have got the slow keyword and these guys have got the slow keyword as well but we're okay because they didn't move more than four inches away from their transport so that's still fine. This unit, the shooting unit again because they're exactly the same as them, they've advanced forward four inches and they're going to shoot at the, uh, the infected weapons teams, the mortars. Now this guy on the end I couldn't get him far enough, so there's a building in the way, so he can't see the infected weapons teams. And the other four, they can't see the entirety of the unit. They can only see this one here. So I'm going to give the infected weapons team the benefit of cover, because they're trying to squeeze the shots between this building and their comrades shooting at that base. So there'll be three shots from their assault rifles hitting on fives and I'll see if I can roll the dice on top of this building. Uh, one fell off but that ended up being a two so they all miss and I'm doing it this way around because this time I'm going to fire the HE rocket at them. This will hit on a five and if it hits it'll be blast three so it'll be three hits. Nope that's a two. So they miss as well. Next unit to activate for the infected will be over on the left flank again. I'm going to have to stop using these green dice, they keep rolling high. So back over here, when we were previously over here with this activation in this sector, uh, we had to roll off between the attack buggy and the zombies. So obviously the zombies have activated, so we're going to activate the attack buggy. And the attack buggy is a hybrid unit, so it's rushed forwards to objective one. The only thing left to activate for the dwarves is the tank. The tank is a hybrid unit and it can't get anywhere near the objective down there because of the sheer volume of bodies of his comrades that are in the way. So I've advanced it forwards and it's going to shoot at the nearest enemy unit uh, that it can see that is, which is the, um, the weapons teams because I realised that these guys are closer physically to them, but none of these units have got line of sight to them because of these buildings in the way. So the tank, if you get down to the level of the turret, it's got a clear shot of the entire unit. It's quite clearly see over the tops of these dwarf warriors. So I'm not gonna give the, uh, the weapons teams the benefit of cover for this one. It gets two shots from its um, twin heavy fusion rifle hitting on fours, both hit. These are AP4, so the uh, mortar teams will be saving on natural sixes. Nope, both those fail on fours. And these are deadly six each, so that will kill off the one that was on two wounds and then kill another base in its entirety as well. And that is the last unit to activate for the Dwarves. So it'll just be 
infected activations from now on. Oh, before we do that, we've got a morale check to take on the mortar teams. And they are quality five up. And that's a three. So that last remaining mortar team is pinned and won't be activating until the end of the turn when it will simply remove its own pin marker. But for now, the next unit to activate will be uh, back on the left flank again. And over here, this infected monster was just closer to objective one than the infected hounds were to objective two. So being a melee unit, the infected monster has rushed towards objective one. And the next unit to activate will be over on the other flank. And in theory, that would be the weapon teams, the mortars, because they are the closest to the objective, but they're currently pinned. So it's going to be the infected tyrant. The infected tyrant is another melee unit. So it's rushed forwards. There was nobody within charge range, but it's rushed forwards towards objective four and unfortunately can't get within three inches of it. And the next unit for them to activate will be, uh, that will be the unit of hounds. That's the last unit over on that left flank. The hounds have rushed onto objective three. Now at the start of their activation, they were actually closer to objective two. However, they would have had to run around those zombies in the top left of the screen which would have made their move longer. So it was a more direct path to objective three. And the, uh, the attack walker is within six inches of objective three. They couldn't quite rush, even with their fast ability, they couldn't quite rush far enough to be in charge range for charging the attack walker. But they are now sat firmly on objective three, which puts the infected, the infected in control of two objectives. And the only units left to activate for the infected are over on the right flank from this perspective and the next unit to activate for them will be the infected monster on that flank. So again just like the infected tyrant the infected monster has rushed forwards but it wasn't in charge range to be charging those dwarf warriors and the final thing to activate over here will be the uh, the attack walker. The attack walker has advanced and is within shooting range with its flamer of this closest unit of dwarf warriors and it's probably the best shot in the entire army actually because it hits on a four that and the attack buggy so six shots from the heavy flamer hitting on fours and that is two hits so the green dice that normally roll high not rolling so high this time uh, ap1 so this will be five up saves on the dwarves and that's two dead dwarves. And then the only thing left to do for the infected is to remove that pin marker from the mortar. I lied, I forgot about the infected specialists that were inside the attack buggy. Now, what I've done here is I have disembarked them within six inches of the attack buggy, close to objective two rather than objective one. Again, to me, it made sense to in theory, they should have gone to, towards objective one, but it's currently an attack buggy sat on that and an infected monster. Um, and there's nobody sat on objective two. Um, plus, they'll be able to shoot at the, uh, the dwarf walker if they move towards objective two. So again, in the spirit of the AI rules, whilst not following them to the letter, um, yeah, it makes sense for me that they would disembark towards objective two so they can then shoot at the dwarf walker. Uh, the two flamethrowers are at the back and they will be out of range, even if I put them at the front they'll be out of range, so I've put them at the back. And we've got two heavy machine guns, which have got three shots each, hitting on fives. And there's three hits, that was a five. AP one, so three up saves on the walker. Uh, fails one, which puts it down to seven wounds left. And then we'll use an anti-tank shot from the grenade launcher, which will hit on a five, which does hit. And this is AP one, so three up save, which passes. Otherwise that would have been deadly three. Okay, so now all the units have activated. Right, let's wrap up turn one. At the end of turn one, the dwarves are holding objective four, but the infected are closing in on it with some big nasty monsters and 
an attack walker. They've taken some casualties over here, they've lost two thirds of their mortars, um, but now this remaining mortar should be safe in the coming turn because it's no longer the closest enemy unit. But uh, yeah, the dwarves, very strong presence on this flank around objective four. In the center, in objective three, the infected are currently holding in, uh, objective three with their infected hounds, with a unit of infected moving up to try to consolidate it, while that lone walker is trying to hold off this entire flank. There are no more dwarf units on this flank, although the power suits will be ambushing in at the start of the next turn. And the infected specialists are on objective two with the zombies moving up to consolidate. The attack buggy and the infected monster are on objective one. Right, it's the start of turn two. So let's see whereabouts the power suit dwarves are gonna ambush in from. Okay, and that's over on this flank which is handy because they've got nobody at all over here. Right, so they're gonna ambush in on this flank and they need to get as close as possible to an objective while staying nine inches away from any enemy models. And they can get closer to objective two than they can to objective one with that in mind. Don't know if dwarves have teleporters, but yeah, teleporting in. And the dwarves finished activating first in turn one. So they will activate first in turn two. So let's see which unit activates first. And that will be the walker in the center. The walker has charged the infected dogs on objective three and it's gonna hit them with his heavy hammer. Four attacks hitting on threes. Everything hits. AP two, the dogs are five up defense. So saving on natural sixes. None, so that's four of them dead. And the walker also gets two stomp attacks, hitting on threes. One hits, and again, this is AP minus one, so saving on that six. Nope, so that's all five dogs taken out by the walker, who can then consolidate onto the objective. And with that, the dwarf walker has taken out as many points worth of infected as it cost itself. So uh, yeah, it's taken out all of the infected hunters, all of the infected dogs. Right, speaking of infected, let's see which unit activates first for them. Uh, that's in the center, so that will be the unit of infected opposite the walker. The infected are a hybrid unit, so they've charged the walker because he's within charge range and they can get to the objective. Uh, they get two attacks each with their close combat weapons. So this is a total of 20 attacks hitting on fives. Okay. six. So that's five get through. And no AP on these. These will be two up saves. And they all save. And the walker can now fight back. Uh, it's already fought in melee this turn, so it's going to be hitting on natural sixes only. So four attacks with the hammer. There's one hit. This will be a natural six to save for the infected. Nope, so that's one dead. And then two stomp attacks hitting on sixes. Uh, none. Right, so one infected dies. So the walker has won that combat. So the infected have to take a morale check, which is a three. They're quality five, so they fail. They've still got more than half of their models though, so they are now pinned. They'll fall back an inch and be pinned. Next unit to activate for the dwarves will be, uh, that will be the newly arrived power suits because there's nothing left in this central sector. Oh, tell a lie. There's actually quite a lot in this central sector now because things moved. I may have made a mistake in turn one. I can't remember because it was a while ago and uh, yeah, trying to concentrate on controlling two different armies. Um, but yeah, when I activated this, I may have activated it saying it was in sector one two and sector one two ends with this building it goes that away from that building uh, and yeah it should have been in the central object uh, central sector 
um, whereas now everything here is definitely in the central sector. These dwarves and the tank did definitely start over here um, in sector one, two. But yeah, I don't think it would have made a huge difference regarding anything that was happened in turn one. Uh, but yeah, everything here is now in the central sector and that walker should definitely have activated first because it was the nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective. This objective down here is controlled by the dwarves, whereas objective three was controlled by the infected dogs. So yeah, the walker would definitely have activated first. So that probably means the infected tyrant should have activated last instead of the infected. Um, but yeah, we'll leave it as it is for now. Mistakes were made. Um, yeah, it's only a game and all said and done. Right, so as long as I pick up the mistakes as we go, it should be fine. Anyway, I'm waffling. The nearest unit, dwarf unit, to an uncontrolled objective in this sector is the tank. It's marginally closer to objective three than the half track is because by virtue of the fact that it's got the big bulldozer blade here, I think. Um, but yeah, the that is the unit we're going to activate next. So in theory, it will advance towards objective three and then shoot at anything it can see or the nearest enemy unit it can see, uh, which is a shame because I'd like to try and consolidate that objective. Okay, the tank has advanced towards objective three. It can no longer see anything of the, uh, the infected monster or the infected tyrant that's over here. Can't see them because of the buildings. Can't see this unit of infected because of this ruin in the way. However, it can quite clearly see these infected specialists over here. So it's gonna take a shot at them. Two shots hitting on fours. And that's one hit. This will be a natural six save. And that's a fail. So one of those specialists dies. It almost feels like a bit of a waste. Again, this is where the AI comes in. If I was controlling that tank, I would have stayed put and tried to kill off probably the infected monster, but uh, hey ho, following the rules wherever we feel we can. Um, it does make sense to me to start pushing this way and hopefully that the dwarves and everything we've got over on objective four can hold off the infected monsters that are heading towards it. Uh, when, and the dwarves need to be pushing this way because there is a lot of infected forces over here. Um, so yeah, to a certain extent it makes sense. Um, I almost feel like I'm rooting for the dwarves, but as I say, I'm quite a big fan of both of these armies. Um, so yeah, taking it in turns to decide whose side I'm on. Uh, right, so on that subject, we'll move on to the infected. And that is over on this flank. And it will be the units closest to an uncontrolled objective. And that will be, I'll have to do some measuring. It's either gonna be the zombies or the infected specialists. Okay, by about half an inch, it turned out to be the zombies. So they've come rushing round the corner and that will mark them as activated. The next unit to activate for the dwarfs is over in sector one, two. There's nothing in there. So that moves us into the central sector. And again, it's the unit in that sector that's closest to an uncontrolled objective. And that will be the half track. Right, the half track is a hybrid unit and so it will be heading towards the nearest uncontrolled objective which is objective three now obviously there's a row of buildings between it and that so what you do is you draw a imaginary line between the unit and where it wants to get to and if there's enemy any enemies within six inches of that line uh, it will charge them because it's a hybrid unit and that would be the uh, the infected tyrant there is within six inches of that line so the half track is going to ram the infected tyrant and this is why i classed it as a hybrid unit because it's got impact six so it does six automatic hits if it completes a charge uh, whereas its ranged attack is only three shots um, that may or may not hit on a four so half track is going to ram the infected tyrant and then do six automatic hits. So this is three up saves on the monstrous tyrant. And it fails one. It is tough three, so it's got two wounds left and it will now get a chance to hit back. It's got monstrous claws, 
which is six attacks, hitting on threes. Sixes don't do anything special, but that's four hits, statistically average. These are AP2, so four up saves on the half track. And it half track saves all of them. So, uh, one wound was inflicted on the monstrous tyrant. No wounds were inflicted on the half track, so the half track won that fight. So, the monstrous tyrant now needs to make a, uh, a morale test. So this will be a three up. And that's a two. So it fails. It's still got more than half its wounds left, so it is now pinned. So the half track will have to back off an inch. And the monstrous tyrant will be pinned, which means it won't be activating this turn. So that's worked out quite well for the dwarves. They've negated one of the threats over on this flank for this turn at least. Uh, so let's see what unit is going to activate next for the infected. And that is going to be in sector 1-2. Um, by the looks of it, that infected monster is just inside the central sector. More than half of its base is in the central sector. That line that it sat on is the demarcation point and there's more than half of its base in here. Uh, so that makes the attack walker, which you, can, which you can just see in the top of the screen, the unit that will activate next because it's closest to an uncontrolled objective, objective four. So that will activate next. The walker has charged the unit of dwarf warriors and the reason it didn't charge the half track is because that gap there between the, uh, the monstrous tyrant and the infected monster isn't quite big enough for the base of the walker to squeeze through. It's on a 60 millimeter base and that gap is 50 millimeters. So it's charged the, uh, the warriors instead and it will get three attacks with its walker chainsaw hitting on fours. That's one hit at AP3. So the dwarves will be sailing on a natural six and that's a five. So one of them dies. The walker also has a stomp attack which will hit on a four. I keep rolling dice behind the building. That was a one, so that's a miss. The dwarves can now fight back. Two attacks hitting on fours. Both hit, no AP, saving on twos, and they both save. So the walker will have won that attack. So the dwarf warriors now need to take a morale check. And that's a pass. It was quality four up. So the walker has to fall back an inch We'll then mark it as activated. Let's keep it close to this building, just in case that infected monster wants to squeeze through, although it'll probably charge the half track rather than the dwarfs. Uh, right, let's see which unit's gonna activate next for the dwarfs. That's cogged, but it would have landed on a five, let's say. So that will be the newly arrived power suits. Okay, over here, the power suits had to drop in more than nine inches away from enemy models. And they've got the slow ability, which means they can only move a maximum of eight. So they're not gonna be able to charge in to any units because they're simply mathematically too far away. So that means they're going to advance towards objective two and then shoot at the nearest enemy unit. After advancing, the attack buggy is about three quarters of an inch closer to the power suits than those infected specialists. So the power suits are gonna to have to shoot at the attack buggy. We'll start with their storm rifles. They get two shots each, and there's five of them in that squad, including the uh, the guild lord, and they've got the same profile. So uh, this will be ten shots hitting on threes, and that's two misses. No AP on these, so this will be two up saves, and one gets through. The attack buggy is tough six, so that puts it down to five wounds left. There's a heavy machine gun, which is three shots hitting on threes. And two hit. AP one, so three up saves on the buggy. And one saves, one gets through, so it puts it down to four wounds left. And then finally, we've got uh, heavy missiles. 
uh, one of the power suits is equipped with heavy missiles so we'll fire the anti-tank profile at it so this is one shot hitting on a three and that hits and this is AP3 so five up save on the buggy and that's a six so it saves so four wounds left on the attack buggy so it starts with six it's not below half health so it doesn't need to take a morale test and the next unit to activate for the infected will be over on this flank uh, that will be the specialists because they are the next closest unit to an uncontrolled objective right being a shooting unit the specialists have to advance towards the nearest uncontrolled objective which is objective four all the way over there um, so that means they've effectively had to ignore the power suits they've advanced past objective two and now the nearest enemy unit will, that they can see anyway in line of sight they can no longer see the power suits because that building is now in the way the nearest enemy unit they can see is the dwarf attack walker so they're going to shoot at that uh, we'll start with the two heavy machine guns so this will be six shots hitting on fives and there's two hits AP1 so three up saves uh, one doesn't save so it's down to half health now six wounds left on it we've got a flamer so the flamethrower is six shots hitting on fives uh, two hit no AP on this so two up saves and again one gets through so it puts it down to five wounds left and then finally the grenade launcher is going to fire an anti-tank round at it uh, which will hit on a five and that's a six so that hits uh, this is AP one so three up save and that's a save right so now the dwarf walker is below half health as a result of shooting so it needs to take a morale check so this is quality three up and that's a pass so it's not pinned so that is the specialist activated let's see which dwarf unit activates next uh, there's only the two squads of infantry left and the unit that is closest to an uncontrolled they're both in the same sector technically in the central sector and the unit that is closest to an uncontrolled objective is the unit of two so that will activate next no need to roll for this right the dwarf warriors these two were up here they've advanced backwards because they're a shooting unit they want to keep their distance from the enemy uh, and now they're going to shoot at the nearest enemy unit which is that infected attack walker so we'll fire with the anti-tank missile first this will hit on a four and that's a miss and then one assault rifle that's a hit this will be a two up save uh, which fails so the attack walker takes one wound uh, it's tough six so that put it down to five left the next unit to activate for the infected will be uh, over on the left flank again the next nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective is the attack buggy just like the half track the attack buggy is a hybrid unit by virtue of the fact it's got impact if it charges something and rams into it so it's going to ram into the power suits and that will be six automatic hits from impact so this will save on threes on the power suits and that's only one fail so one of the power suits will take one wound they're all tough three uh, but the power suits now get chance to hit back so we will have six heat hammers with two attacks each hitting on threes and sixes are rending and there's three sixes there the others are regular hits so rending is AP minus four. So this will be six up saves on the attack buggy, natural sixes. And all three of those fail. So it's down to one wound left. And then these are just standard two up saves. And it fails one of them as well. So it is destroyed. That's the last wound taken off the attack buggy.
power suits have consolidated forwards three inches and I've put the wound inflicted by the attack buggy onto the, uh, the non WYSIWYG guy. The next unit to activate for the dwarves is the one remaining unit of warriors that hasn't activated yet over on the other flank slash center. It's on the borderline between the two. So yeah, the, um, the unit of warriors down here was definitely more in this sector than they were in this sector. There was only one model partially on the, the border. So they have shuffled sideways slightly, heading towards the nearest uncontrolled objective and still being able to shoot at the nearest enemy unit, which is the attack walker. Uh, so we'll start off with the missile launcher firing an anti-tank round. This will hit on a four because they can see more than half of it. And that's a hit. And that's AP3, so this will be a 5-up save, which saves. And then we've got 4 assault rifles hitting on 4s. And that's 3 hits, 2-up saves, and they all save as well. Right, next unit to activate for the infected will be... Uh, so that's in the centre, and everything that away in the centre has activated. So that leaves the infected monster and the mortar team. Uh, the mortar team is not closer to an objective than the monster, so the monster is simply going to charge the half track. Crump with a capital cr. Right, I think we've been looking forward to see how these uh, infected monsters do. They get six attacks, hitting on threes. Ooh, everything hits. Uh, no rending, unfortunately, there, but all of these are AP2. So this will be four up saves on the, um, the half track. And that's two fail. So it's tough six, it's down to four wounds left. And then it's got a stomp attack, just one attack with its stomp hitting on a three. And we'll say that's a pass because it's definitely on a three. And AP one, so three up save. And that saves. Now, the half track hasn't got any close combat weapons to hit back with. It's only got its impact attacks, impact attacks if it completes a charge. So the, um, the monster automatically wins that combat. So this means a morale check on the half track. It's quality four up, which passes. So the monster has to back off an inch, but the half track is down to four wounds left. All of the dwarves have activated now. So let's see which unit activates next for the infected. And that's going to be on the other flank, and the only unit left to activate over there is the other infected monster. And the infected monster has simply charged over into the power suits. It was just within range, it was about 11 and a half inches away on the other side of objective one. So it's going to get six attacks hitting on threes. And again, everything hits. This will be five up saves on the power suits. And that is three fails. So that will kill off this guy and put one down to one wound left. And then the single stomp attack is a hit, saving on a four, and that's a save. And then coming back, only ten attacks this time because one of the power suits is now dead. Hitting on natural sixes because they've already fought in combat. And that's only a single hit. However, it is a rend. So this will be a minus four, which makes a natural six for the infected monster, uh, which it saves. So the infected monster has won that combat. Uh, so the power suits now have to make a morale check. Three up, which they pass. So the monster backs off an inch. And then everything over this side has activated, everything in the center has activated. Um, the only thing left to activate is the, uh, the single remaining mortar and the monstrous tyrant. Uh, the monstrous tyrant is pinned, so the 
the mortar will now get a chance to fire. So the mortar, because it's an indirect weapon on a shooting unit, uh, the unit always gets a halt order. It never moves if it can shoot something, and right now it can. Uh, again, it will shoot at the nearest enemy unit, which is the half track. So it gets one shot, hitting on a five. And that's a four, so that's a miss. And then the only unit left to activate is the monstrous tyrant, who will simply remove his pin. And that will be the end of turn two. At the end of turn two, the dwarves are just about holding on to objective four, but again, the infected are closing in on it. The dwarves have taken objective three because that unit of infected is pinned, so cannot contest or control an objective. Uh, the infected retain their hold on objective two and also on objective one. Going into turn three, the Dwarves will get the first activation because they finished activating first. Right, into turn three, and just to be completely clear, there are no Dwarf units in sector one slash two. So everything will either be in the center or in uh, the, the left flank. So the first unit to activate for the Dwarves will be, uh, it'll be in the center because there's nothing in sector one slash two. The nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective will be the walker because the nearest uncontrolled objective is objective two down here and they currently control objective three and objective four. Right, from its position it will be heading towards objective two and the unit of infected right in front of it will be classed as being in its way so it will charge them en route and move in like that, taking its five remaining wounds with it. Uh, let's move it a bit closer towards objective two. And it will get four attacks on the infected, hitting on threes. Oh, that's not so good. Any one hit. Natural six to save, uh, which is a fail. So another infected dies. We'll take the guy in the hazmat suit away. And then two attacks from Stomps, hitting on threes. Both of those hit. Again, six is to save because it's AP one and they're five up defense. And one saves, one doesn't, so another one dies. Right, the infected now get a chance to fight back and they can move in before they do to get as many within two inches as they can. Uh, they're all now within two inches, but because they're pinned, they're only gonna hit on natural sixes. So this is going to be seven attacks, because there's seven of them left. And that's one hit. And this will save on a two plus, and that's fine. So they now need to take another leadership check, morale check rather, on a five up, but they automatically fail it because they're pinned. Now they've still got more than half of their um, unit left. So I just need to double check if in melee, if that means they automatically fail, do they rout? I don't think they do because they've got more than half the unit left. I'm gonna to have to check that though. So yeah, I've just checked the rules and the um, the unit just simply remains pinned because they're, uh, they're more, at more than half strength. So they automatically fail the morale test and they stay pinned. Uh, and the walker has withdrawn an inch. Right, on to the infected's turn first unit to activate for them will be on the left flank and it will be the unit closest to an uncontrolled objective. It can't be these infected because they're pinned. So it's either going to be the zombies or the specialists. And looking at it, the zombies are closer to objective three than the specialists are. So the zombies are going to charge into the walker. Right, so the zombies have charged in and there is actually enough space for all of them to get in the two inch combat range. So, uh, they get three attacks each. This is gonna be 30 attacks. Hitting on fives. And that's not too shabby. These green dice doing what they do best, which is roll sixes. So 
So that's 12 hits out of 30 attacks. Okay, but there's no AP on these, no rending. So two up saves. And you know what? That's four fails. It's down to one wound left. And it will now get chance to fight back, the walker that is. And because it's already fought in melee this turn, it's only hitting on natural sixes. So four attacks with the hammer. Uh, nothing. Two stomp attacks. Uh, one. This will be a natural six to save. There's AP one. And that's a fail, so one zombie dies. Uh, so the zombies win that combat. The walker has to take a uh, leadership check, a morale check on a three up. And that's a fail, so it's routed. Dwarf walker falls. And I'd like to think that rather than it running away in fear, I'd like to think it's just been ripped asunder by all of those infected swarming all over it. So the zombies then get a chance to consolidate three inches towards the nearest uncontrolled objective, which is objective three. And we move on to the dwarf's next activation, which will be uh, in the center again. The nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective in the center is the tank. So again, we control objective four, which is behind that building. Technically, we still control objective three until the end of this turn. So the next nearest uncontrolled objective is objective two, which is up here somewhere. So the tank will be heading in that direction. And by virtue of that, and by virtue of the fact, again, it's a hybrid unit because it's got impact six, as opposed to just two shots from its tank guns, um, it has charged into the zombies. So six impact automatic hits on the zombies, saving on fives. and that's six dead zombies. The three remaining zombies can fight back. Three attacks each. But they've already fought in combat this turn, so this will be hitting on unmodified sixes only. Natural sixes. There's one. Uh, two up save on the tank, which it passes. So it then withdraws an inch. And, oh no, tell life doesn't withdraw yet because we need to do leadership checks. So the zombies are fearless and they definitely lost that combat. So they need to take a morale check. So this will be on a four up because they are fearless. Ooh, that's a, that's a two. So they fail, they're down to less than half their starting, four, starting size. So they are routed. So rather than the tank withdrawing an inch, it can consolidate forwards up to three inches, but staying an inch away from enemy models. Next unit to activate for the infected will be uh, on the leftmost flank. So again, that will be the specialists now, which are just there. Because again, technically objective three is still controlled by the dwarfs. So the specialists have advanced towards objective three as far as they can. Uh, they can't squeeze through the gap between the tank and the infected. So they're now gonna shoot at the tank. We'll start with the two heavy machine guns, six shots hitting on fives. And that's one hit. At AP one will be a three up save. And that's a fail. Uh, the tank is tough 12, so it's got 11 wounds left. Uh, we'll go for the grenade launcher next, firing an anti-tank grenade, hitting on a five. And that rolled backwards, but it was a two, so it's a miss. And then flamethrower, six shots, hitting on fives. Uh, that's one hit. No AP, so two up save. And that's a four, so that's a save. Next unit to activate for the dwarfs will be... That was a six, so that would be the power suits. Power suits are a hybrid unit, and if there are any enemies within six inches of their route to get to the closest, en uh, closest uncontrolled objective, they will attack it, even if that means going in the wrong direction. 
So on that basis, I think because we've got the tank coming up here, these guys are going to charge and get in and around the back of the monster heading towards objective one. There we go. And they get a total of 10 attacks hitting on threes. Sixes are rending. And there's a six and only three misses. So we'll do these ones first. These are just flat two up saves on the infected monster. Ooh, and there's four fails. And the six will be a natural six. Uh, so that's five fails. It's down to one wound left because it's tough six. However, it is still alive, so it will get chance to hit back. So six attacks hitting on threes. So that's only one miss. AP two. So five up saves on the dwarves. And saves four of them, but it will kill that one on one wound left. A single stomp attack, uh, which hits AP one, so saving on a four. Saves. So the dwarves definitely won that combat. The infected monster needs to make a morale check and if it fails this it'll be routed so a three up so it passes the dwarves have to back off an inch and the next unit to activate for the infected will be uh, in the center that will be the oh i need to measure up it's either going to be the monstrous tyrant or the other infected monster it is really close, but I think the monstrous tyrant is just about half an inch closer to objective four than the infected monster is. Um, there's not a lot in it at all, but from what I can tell, based on how close I can get my tape measure, uh, it doesn't help there's a half track in the way. Um, the tyrant is that little bit closer, so it's gonna charge the half track. We'll get six attacks hitting on threes. There's only one miss. AP two, so four up saves. And that's two fails. So the half track is down to less than half health. And most importantly, it can't fight back. So it has automatically lost the combat. So it needs to take a morale check. The monstrous tyrant has got the terrifying upgrade, which means enemies get minus one to morale tests in melee. So ordinarily this would be a four up for the half track, but now it's a five up for its leadership check, morale check. What is it? There's a flamer in the way. It's a five. It just hangs in there. That's quite an heroic driver in that half track. So the monstrous tyrant has to back off an inch. And then we'll see which unit is going to activate next. Although all the remaining dwarf units are all in the same sector. And the half track is the closest one to an uncontrolled objective. So sticking over here, the half track will simply ram the monstrous tyrant and will inflict six automatic wounds due to impact six three up saves oh look at that that's four fails so that will take out the monstrous tyrant it's only on two wounds left and the half track will consolidate keeping within three inches of objective four so it can still defend it um, but yeah onto the next infected unit. The only unit left in the central sector at the minute is that infected monster. So it's gonna charge the half track is the closest unit. So we'll charge the half track in the back. Six attacks hitting on threes, trying to rip it open. Ooh. Only one hit. 
uh, AP minus two, four up save, which is a fail. Just got one wound left, and then one stomp attack, misses. But again, the half track can't fight back, so the infected monster automatically wins. Half track is down to one wound left. It needs to take a morale check again, but uh, four plus this time because the infected monster doesn't have the terrifying ability, which you would think it would have really, but it doesn't. So four up and it passes again. So the monstrous infected, the infected monster withdraws an inch. Both of these dwarf units, they're the ones that are left to activate. They're both in the same sector. This one was closest to an uncontrolled objective, so again they've just backed up a little bit, keeping their distance from these rampaging monsters and the walker, and uh, they're going to shoot at the infected monster. So we'll start with an anti-tank missile at the monster. That's a miss. And an assault rifle at the monster hits. This will be a two-up save, which saves. And this time there really is no point in rolling for which infected model is going to go next. It's going to be the walker. And the walker is going to charge the nearest enemy unit, which is the half track. He gets three attacks with its walker chainsaw. One of them hits. AP3, this will be a five up save. And it saves. That half track is a hero it's standing in there but there's one stomp attack hitting on a four it hits it's minus one three up save and it saves again the walker has to withdraw an inch this squad of dwarves has shuffled over slightly again keeping a safe distance away from the monsters the missile launcher is going to shoot at the infected monster and miss. Four assault rifles are going to shoot at the infected monster and two of them hit. Two up saves on the infected monster and it saves them both. Finally the infected mortar is going to shoot at the half track. One shot hitting on a five. That's a four. It misses. And the only thing left to do now is remove the pin marker off those infected near ob objective three. And that will be the end of turn three. At the end of turn three. Uh, yeah, that was uh, quite dramatic towards the end. Um, the dwarves are still hanging on to objective four. That half track has got one wound left. And the other dwarves are watching from afar, trying to lay down suppressing fire on the monsters that are still trying to take that objective. So dwarves are holding objective four still. Because their pin marker was removed, these infected now control objective three. The tank is more than three inches away from it. So they've taken back objective three. And the infected still hold objective two. However, because of their slingshot charge around the back of the infected monster, the dwarf power suits are now within three inches of objective one. So two objectives held each between the dwarves and the infected going into turn four this is quite evenly balanced and the dwarves will get the first activation in turn four going into turn four the first unit to activate for the dwarves will be uh, there's nothing in sector one slash two so it's going to be something in the center and the nearest unit in the center is actually the tank because more than half of it this is the dividing line between the central sector and this flank and there's more than half of the tank that side of the line so yeah it is closest to objective three so it will activate and it's going to charge the infected and we'll charge in such a way that we move on to the objective Six automatic hits on the infected, saving on fives. There's four sixes there. That's only two dead infected. Ordinarily it's the green dice that roll sixes. Ten attacks coming back in on fives. Uh, that's three hits. So 
saving on twos. All save. So the tank won that combat. Morale check on the infected. Five up. Uh, that's a fail. And there's less than half, they're down to half unit strength, so the rest of them are out. And that means the dwarf tank can consolidate three inches and form a barrier between the objective and those infected specialists. The next unit to activate for the infected will be uh, that will be the mortar. That's a two. That was a two. And the only unit in that sector is the mortar. Yet again, shooting at the half track, trying to take that last remaining wound off, hitting on a five. That's a six. It hits. It's blast three, so that one hit becomes three hits, saving on twos. They all save on twos. I'm starting to think that half track is unkillable. Right, next unit to activate for the dwarves. Uh, there's nothing in 1 slash 2, so it's going to be. Uh, let's have a look. It's going to be the half track. The half track is the next nearest unit to an uncontrolled objective. And that's going to ram the nearest enemy unit, of which there are two. So on a 1, 2, 3, it'll be the walker. On a 4, 5, 6, it'll be the monstrous infected monster. Uh, it's going to ram into the walker. Six automatic hits, saving on twos. And they'll save. Walker's fighting back with its chainsaw. Three attacks, hitting on fours. Only one hit. AP3, five save. And that's a fail. So finally, that half track does indeed get crushed. And the walker consolidates towards the objective. Next unit to activate for the infected. Uh, that's the other monster on the other flank. And it is quite simply going to charge the, uh, the dwarves. And a bit like they did, it's going to slingshot around the back. Because it can move 12 inches when it charges. Getting close to objective one. And then attacking the dwarves from the rear. Six attacks hitting on threes. Uh, that's only three hits. AP2 saving on fives. Nope, that is another dead dwarf. We'll take out um, that one. He's the last one without any upgrades. Six attacks hitting on threes. Uh, that's five hits, two of which are rending. Natural six is to save. One does, one doesn't, so that will take the last wound off. And the dwarves can consolidate towards objective two, which is currently held by the infected. They still count as having captured objective one. The next unit to activate for the dwarves will be one of the units of warriors over near objective four. Right, the unit of two down here uh, they have backed off a bit away from those monsters, trying to keep, um, in theory, they're heading towards objective three, which uh, technically the dwarves don't count as having captured until the end of this turn. Um, but equally, they're trying to stay out of charge range of the, uh, of the monster and that walker. So they've backed off four inches and they're now going to shoot at the inf infected monster. We'll start with a missile launcher, hitting on a four, see if he can actually hit the side of a barn this time. He hits! AP3, five up save. It fails, that's deadly three. So that's three wounds off the infected monster. It's tough six, it's got three left. Uh, one assault rifle going into it. It hits, two up save. It passes. Uh, the infected monster is down to half wounds, needs to make a morale check on a three up. It passes. Next unit to activate for the infected. Over on the left flank, that's going to be the specialists. Right, the specialists are a shooting unit, so they're going to advance towards the nearest 
uncontrolled objective, uh, which is technically objective one. And they're going to make it halfway across the road and then shoot at the nearest enemy unit, which will be the power suits. Start with the grenade launcher hitting on a five, anti-tank grenade, which is a miss. Because if that had hit and wounded, it would have killed one outright with um, deadly three. Uh, two heavy machine guns, six shots hitting on fives. Uh, that's three hits, AP1, four up saves, uh, two fail, so one is down to one wound left. Now then, we'll put that on, who do we put that on? The heavy machine gunner or the guy with the rockets? We'll put it on the guy with the rockets, I think. And then flamethrower, six shots sitting on fives. And that's two hits. No AP, three up saves. Uh, they both pass. Right, now I don't think there's a leadership to take there, a morale check, because there's still half the unit left. Um, they're technically below their wounds, but of course you go by number of models, not by number of wounds. So uh, that will be them activated. Next unit to activate for the dwarfs will be uh, that will be the other unit of warriors. As with that unit, this unit is backed up a bit away from the very angry monster. Um, yeah, and they're going to shoot at it. Missile launcher hitting on a four anti-tank is a miss. Uh, four assault rifles hitting on fours. Uh, three hits. Two up saves, and all save. So, a miss and all of the bullets failing to penetrate that hard bony armour of it. And the only units left to activate are those two that we can see, or just about see, the monster and the walker. Again, technically, Objective 4 is not held by the infected colonies until the end of the turn. So the monster is just that little bit closer to it than the walker is. Now it's purely melee unit so it is going to charge the larger of the group of dwarves down here because they are fractionally closer than that one. Right, it's charged in, six attacks hitting on threes. And that's three hits. Natural six is to save because they're AP two against defense four. And that's two dead. One stomp attack hitting on a three is a miss. Three close combat weapons hitting on fours. And that's two hits. No AP, so two up saves. And saves them both. Uh, so the dwarves now need to take a leadership check, a morale test, and this will pass on a four, and it passes, and the monster backs off an inch. And finally, the attack walker has advanced, uh, keeping within three inches of objective four, even though it advanced its full six inches, and it's going to fire its heavy flamethrower at the squad of two. So six shots hitting on fours. And that is just one hit. Five up save, AP1, and that is a five. And there is nothing left to activate. At the end of the fourth and final turn, the infected colonies finally managed to secure objective four. The dwarves have retaken objective three. The infected colonies hold objective two and the dwarves continue to hold objective one. So it's two objectives apiece. It is a draw. And when you look, see what units are left, there's a unit of four out of five infected specialists left. There's three out of six power suits left for the dwarves. 
there's a slightly scratched battle tank for the dwarves. There is an almost fully functional attack walker. There's a half dead slash half alive monster. There's effectively half of the dwarf warriors dead. There's three left in one squad, two in another, and a single mortar. So I think on the whole, that is about as balanced as it's possible to get. It ended in a draw, two objectives each. Um, if I was to tot up the points, I think the dwarfs might have more points left. Well, they're definitely going to have more points left because that tank costs quite a bit and so do those power suits. Um, but yeah, I think that says a lot for how balanced the rules are. Um, if you're going to pit an AI unit against an AI unit, an AI army against an AI army. Um, yeah, it's come down to a draw and neither side has completely wiped out the other um, or completely bulldozed over the other. The dwarves started out of position and they managed to get all the way across to take the, uh, the objective over on the extreme flank, although that's partially due to the fact they had some ambushes coming in. But again, they were managed to hold the centre, take and hold the centre. And um, yeah, the swarms of the infected managed to swarm across the table uh, and take some objectives. So yeah, on the whole, I think that's quite balanced. One of the armies was quite an elite army. The other one was quite a horde army. So yeah, interesting mix, interesting balance. What more can you say? Uh, well done to the writers for making it so balanced in the long run. I think again, some of the, um, the interpretation of the rules does take a little bit of interpreting. Um, there are certain things that obviously a human player wouldn't have done. If I was playing as the infected colonies, the first thing I would have done would be shoot the mortars. As it happened, they were, not, they were one of the last things to activate in the first turn. And by that time, I think they were pinned. So yeah, um, the, there are certain things that I probably wouldn't have done. I probably wouldn't have moved the tank away from these monsters that were coming up. I'd have left it there to deal with the, uh, the multi-toughness threats that were coming up here with its deadly six shots. Uh, however, that said, it was, it was an enjoyable game. Uh, some bits were really nail-biting. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun to play. So yeah, check out the AI rules and try having a game yourself with AI versus AI rather than you versus the AI. Um, because we've all seen, or if you've watched my videos, you, you've seen ha that it can be quite easy as a solo player taking on the AI. It's, if you know how to beat it, you can beat it. But AI versus AI, that's an interesting experiment and it was a lot of fun. The next thing I probably want to do is do uh, a handicap game. So I'll choose an army and give the AI a 50% points advantage. And I'm thinking 1500 points for me, 2250 for the AI, so it gets 50% more points than me. Um, yeah, that could be a bit of a challenge and we'll think about doing that next. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you found that as interesting as I did um, and I hope you found it as much fun as I did. But until next time, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, God bless. Oh,